In this video, we'll embark on a detailed exploration of the anatomy of the masticatory muscles, exploring their structure and functions. In this presentation, we will start with an introductory overview, setting the stage for a comprehensive understanding of the masticatory muscles. Following the introduction, we will embark on a detailed examination of each muscle individually, covering the temporalis, masseter, lateral pterygoid, medial pterygoid, and suprahyoid muscles. Each segment will delve into the unique structure and function of these muscles. Furthermore, we will explore clinical correlations, highlighting how these muscles relate to various medical conditions. Masticatory muscles, also known as the muscles of mastication, are instrumental in the mechanical process of chewing and grinding food, preparing it for digestion. These muscles are functionally classified into two main categories based on their primary actions in jaw movement, the jaw elevators and the jaw depressors. The jaw elevators, which include the masseter, temporalis, and medial pterygoid muscles, crucial for raising the jaw. The masseter, one of the strongest muscles in the human body, is vital for clenching the jaw, while the temporalis, with its fan-shaped structure, assists in both elevating and retracting the jaw. The medial pterygoid complements these actions by contributing to the elevation and slight lateral movement of the jaw. Conversely, the jaw depressors facilitate the lowering of the jaw. This group consists of the lateral pterygoid muscle, which is unique in its ability to both depress and protrude the jaw, and the anterior digastric, geniohyoid, and myelohyoid muscles, which aid in opening the mouth and stabilizing the jaw. Beginning our exploration of the masticatory muscles with the temporalis muscle, we note its extensive fan-shaped structure, making it a prominent feature in the temporal region of the skull. As the largest muscle in this group, it plays a crucial role in the mechanics of jaw movement. Originating from the temporal fossa and the deep surface of the temporalis fascia, its fibers run downward, converging into a tendon that exits the temporal fossa to insert onto the coronoid process and the ramus of the mandible. This robust insertion provides significant leverage for the muscle's functions. Innervated by the temporal branches of the anterior division of the mandibular nerve, a branch of the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve V, the temporalis muscle is crucial for mandibular movements. It primarily elevates the mandible, facilitating biting and chewing actions. Additionally, its role in retracting the mandible is essential for complex masticatory movements. Clinically, the temporalis muscle is significant in several aspects. Disorders affecting this muscle, such as myalgia or muscle spasms, can lead to temporomandibular joint disorders, causing pain and functional impairment. It is also involved in tension-type headaches due to its location and the stress exerted during prolonged mastication or clenching. Furthermore, variations in the size and strength of the temporalis muscle can affect facial contours, contributing to individual differences in facial aesthetics. In some medical procedures, such as reconstructive surgeries, the temporalis muscle may be used as a flap due to its size and vascular supply, highlighting its importance beyond masticatory functions. Lastly, although primarily involved in mastication, the temporalis muscle also plays a minor role in certain facial expressions, such as clenching the jaw in anger or concentration, demonstrating the interconnected nature of facial muscles. The masseter muscle, with its robust and rectangular shape, plays a vital role in masticatory functions. Covering the lateral surface of the ramus of the mandible, it is distinguished by its division into two parts, the superficial portion, which is larger and more visible, and the deeper portion, which is smaller and lies beneath the superficial part. Originating from the zygomatic arch, the masseta muscle extends to insert into the lateral angle and surface of the mandibular ramus and the coronoid process of the mandible. This strategic insertion allows the muscle to effectively elevate and protract the mandible, critical actions for chewing and biting. The masseteric artery, a branch of the maxillary artery, primarily supplies this muscle. As for its nerve supply, the masseter muscle is innervated by the masseteric branch of the anterior division of the mandibular nerve, which is a branch of the trigeminal nerve. Clinically, the masseter muscle is significant for several reasons. It can be involved in various disorders, such as bruxism, teeth grinding, which can lead to hypertrophy of the muscle, affecting facial appearance and causing dental issues. Additionally, dysfunction in the masseter can contribute to temporomandibular joint disorders, leading to pain and functional limitations in jaw movement. 
The size and strength of the masita muscle can also vary significantly among individuals, affecting the contours of the face and contributing to differences in facial aesthetics. This muscle's prominence is especially noticeable when clenched, as seen during strong emotional expressions like anger or determination. The lateral pterygoid muscle, characterized by its conical shape and two-headed structure, is integral to the complex mechanics of jaw movement. The superior head, originating from the greater wing of the sphenoid bone, and the inferior head, arising from the lateral pterygoid plate, converge to form a muscle with a unique action in the masticatory system. After merging, the muscle fibers extend posteriorly and laterally to insert into the pterygoid fovea. Notably, the lateral pterygoid also attaches to the anterior margin of the articular disc and capsule of the temporomandibular joint, making it directly involved in temporomandibular joint dynamics. It receives its nerve supply from the lateral pterygoid branch of the mandibular nerve, a branch of the trigeminal nerve. Functionally, this muscle is essential not only for depressing the mandible but also for retracting the temporomandibular joint, a movement unique among the masticatory muscles. It enables side-to-side -side movements of the jaw, which are crucial for the grinding and crushing phases of mastication. Clinically, the lateral pterygoid muscle holds significant importance. Dysfunction or imbalance in this muscle can lead to temporomandibular joint disorders, causing pain, clicking sounds, or limited movement in the jaw. It is also often implicated in bruxism, teeth grinding, and other myofascial pain syndromes. Due to its deep location and complex functions, it can be challenging to treat disorders involving the lateral pterygoid. The medial pterygoid muscle, characterized by its robust quadrangular shape and two distinct heads, is essential in the complex mechanics of jaw function. The superficial head originates from the maxillary tuberosity, and the deep head from the lateral pterygoid plate of the sphenoid bone. These fibers course obliquely, running posteriorly and laterally, and converge to insert at the medial angle of the mandible. This strategic positioning allows the muscle to exert significant influence over mandibular movements. The medial pterygoid muscle receives its nerve supply from the medial pterygoid nerve, a branch of the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. Functionally, the medial pterygoid muscle is indispensable for elevating and protruding the mandible, actions that are integral to the masticatory process. By facilitating the grinding and crushing of food, it works in concert with other masticatory muscles to ensure efficient digestion. Moreover, the medial pterygoid muscle, in coordination with the lateral pterygoid, plays a vital role in controlling the lower jaw's movements in multiple planes, contributing to complex actions like chewing, speaking, and yawning. Clinically, the medial pterygoid muscle is significant in diagnosing and treating various orofacial conditions. Dysfunction or hypertrophy of this muscle can contribute to temporomandibular joint disorders, leading to pain, discomfort, and functional impairment in jaw movements. The suprahyoid muscles, critical accessory muscles aiding the primary muscles of mastication, play vital roles in the functions of the lower face and neck. These muscles, constituting the floor of the mouth, include the digastric muscle, comprising two bellies, the anterior belly is innervated by the malohyoid nerve, a branch of the trigeminal nerve, and the posterior belly by the facial nerve. Functionally, the digastric muscle aids in lowering the mandible and elevating the hyoid bone, important during swallowing and speech. The malohyoid muscle, also innervated by the malohyoid nerve, this muscle forms a muscular floor for the oral cavity. It assists in elevating the floor of the mouth during the initial stage of swallowing and plays a role in stabilizing the mandible. The geniohyoid muscle, uniquely innervated by fibers from the first cervical spinal nerve, which travel with the hypoglossal nerve, this muscle aids in depressing the mandible and elevating and protracting the hyoid, facilitating swallowing and speech. And the stylohyoid muscle, primarily innervated by the facial nerve, this muscle elongates the floor of the mouth during swallowing and elevates the hyoid bone. Together, the suprahyoid muscles are integral in various functional activities, including mastication, swallowing, and speech. They also play a significant role in maintaining posture and position of the hyoid bone, which is essential for the structural integrity of the upper airway. Dysfunction in these muscles can lead to difficulties in swallowing, dysphagia, and other oropharyngeal disorders.
After a detailed exploration of each masticatory muscle, let's now turn our attention to their clinical correlations with a specific focus on trismus. Trismus, commonly referred to as lockjaw, is a condition characterized by a reduced ability to open the mouth, typically resulting from a contraction or spasm of the masticatory muscles. This condition not only reflects issues within the muscles themselves but can also be indicative of broader systemic or local pathologies. Trauma to the jaw, such as mandibular or zygomatic arch fractures, or direct injuries to the masticatory muscles, often results in trismus. The swelling, inflammation, or injury associated with such trauma disrupts normal jaw movement, requiring prompt medical attention to relieve symptoms and prevent long-term dysfunction. Similarly, the presence of tumors, either benign or malignant, near the jaw or masticatory muscles, can exert pressure on these structures. This pressure can restrict jaw movement, underscoring the importance of early detection and treatment of these growths. Furthermore, infections such as dental abscesses, ear, nose, and throat infections, or joint infections can also lead to trismus due to the inflammation and swelling they cause. Timely medical intervention is crucial to treat both the infection and the resultant muscle spasm. Additionally, myositis, characterized by inflammation of the muscles, can affect the masticatory muscles, leading to pain and restricted movement. These conditions are among the most common causes of trismus. In conclusion, the muscles of mastication are central to the intricate processes of chewing, speaking, and swallowing, playing a crucial role in everyday functions that are essential for health and quality of life. These muscles are divided into primary and secondary groups based on their anatomical attachments and functional roles. The primary group, directly attached to the mandible, consists of muscles that work in pairs to facilitate specific mandibular movements such as elevation, depression, protrusion, retraction, and side-to-side -side motions. This coordination is crucial for effective mastication and articulation. The secondary group, including muscles like the suprahyoid muscles, connects to structures in the neck and plays a supportive role in the masticatory process. These muscles work in concert with the primary group to enable complex movements and functions. Both groups are innervated by the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve, ensuring precise motor control. Their arterial supply, mainly from the branches of the maxillary artery, is vital for their metabolic needs and functional endurance. The significance of understanding the anatomy and physiology of these muscles extends beyond basic oral functions. In dentistry, knowledge of these muscles aids in diagnosing and treating conditions such as temporomandibular joint disorders, bruxism, and oral pathologies. In maxillofacial surgery, this understanding is essential for reconstructive and corrective procedures. Additionally, in the field of speech therapy, insights into these muscles contribute to the management of speech and swallowing disorders. Their dysfunction can lead to significant impairments, highlighting the importance of these muscles in maintaining oral health, nutritional status, and overall well-being.